Today we're going to examine the Egyptian goddess Isis in Rome and the Roman world. Statues, sanctuaries, and more. The Egyptian goddess Isis was the mother of Horus and associated with the fertility of the Nile. She became also associated with shipping, important eventually for the Romans, bringing grain from Egypt to Rome. And she was also heavily featured with the god Serapis, a combination of Osiris and Apis created by the Ptolemies. This is the Farnese Cup, one of the most famous pieces of art from the Greco-Roman world. It was created for the Ptolemies in the second century BC, and here is heavily featured the goddess Isis reclining, and it was a showpiece owned by the rulers of Egypt that then became in the possession of Augustus, who's going to be conquering Egypt and Cleopatra, and also help usher in the prominence of the cult of Isis. But this is something that was passed down for generations to a variety of emperors finally going to Constantinople and brought back to Italy in 1204, eventually becoming the possession of the Farnese family. Today you'll find it in the Archaeological Museum of Naples. Isis comes to Italy through traders from Delos into Sicily and into Pompeii by about 140 BC, also going to other coastal towns like Puteoli, Minturna, Neapolis, and Cumi. In Pompeii, we have the magnificent remains of the Temple of Isis preserved by the theater. And from Herculaneum near the theater, we have this magnificent scene of veneration. We see a sphinx, we see black African priests with their heads shaved, and we have the burning and an altar flanked by ibis birds that come from Egypt. From Puteoli, we have the magnificent Mechelum, and it is a shopping center in this very important Republican and Imperial Harbor, but also because there was the discovery of a statue of Serapis, it became known as the Temple of Serapis. Serapis was frequently depicted and venerated with Isis, and here he is, a combination of Osiris and Apis. He is associated with the underworld, hence the depiction of Cerberus, the three-headed dog, as well as a Modius crown on his head. He, like Isis, is associated with shipping and grain, because Modius is a dry measure for grain. We travel to ancient Praeneste in Lazio, where there was a prominent sanctuary of the goddess Fortuna Primogenia, who became heavily associated with the goddess Isis. And we can see her in this sanctuary in two locations quite clearly. Both in the statuary, here is a colossal statue of Isis. This Fortuna Isis figure was venerated alongside the more typical representation of Fortuna, Fortuna of the firstborn children. We can explore this multi-layered sanctuary and city in ancient Praeneste that dates to the last centuries of the Republic. And in one space, there is this, which has been interpreted as quite potentially an easium or a place for the veneration of Isis or a manifestation of Fortuna Isis. And this particular grotto there is something extraordinary originally on the pavement. Here is the famous Nile mosaic, which is one of the most magnificent mosaics produced in the ancient world. It's now in the museum in the sanctuary. And what you see are scenes of the Ptolemaic rulers and scenes of the Nile River, tying it in again to that figure of Isis, Isis that has become associated with the Italic deity Fortuna Primigenia. Now let's travel to Rome. So we have the arrival of Isis in the Republican period, again in the second century, in the first century BC. And the real standout feature in the 80s BC is a large terraced sanctuary dedicated to Isis by a certain Metellus. So it's known as Isium Metellinum. And it actually, when it's rebuilt in the imperial period, gives the name to the third region of Augustus's 14 regions in the city. Let's take a look at it. 
here in front of the remains of a massive sanctuary that was built up along the hillside behind me on the Esquiline Hill, principally dating to the time of the Flavians, dedicated to Isis, Fortuna Isis, and of course, the precursor is Fortuna and Palestrina. That massive sanctuary finds a new home, an imperial version right here, just a few passes away from the Domusalia. So a real dramatic change is when Augustus defeats Cleopatra, and you're going to have a kind of Egyptomania craze. In part, you have the obelisk for the first time being brought back to Rome as a war trophy. This one here in Piazza del Popolo was brought by Augustus as one of the spina in the Circus Maximus. The most important contribution in the presence of Isis in Rome was the Temple of Isis and Serapis. We see here a fragment from the former Urbis. This was last rebuilt by Domitian, and it was spectacular. It was colossal. Here we see it in the Campus Martius area, so close to the Sypta, so close to the Pantheon. It was a real standout temple in the Campus Martius, and we don't have it excavated, but we do have a lot of statuary that was recovered Look at this magnificent reclining Nile statue that comes from the Temple of Isis and Serapis. We have a number of obelisks that are associated with the Temple of Isis and Serapis, including this one that was manufactured by Domitian today in Piazza Navona. We have this obelisk as well in front of the Pantheon. We have a colossal statue of Isis, quite possibly the cult statue of the Temple of Isis that's near Piazza Venezia, and we have the remains of another colossal statue from the temple. Here is the Gargantuan, the Bigfoot of Rome. This is a Serapis cult statue or public statue within the Serapeum and the Isium complex in the Campus Martius. Beautifully preserved and here on public display, recently restored. And this is big history in Rome. And it's not just statuary, it's also columns. But look at these columns, how they're beautifully finished with figures. Now we see a lot of priests here. Priests of Isis shave their heads. They've got various implements in their hands. And we can think about this as a truly impressive colonnade, part of the Temple of Serapis. And of course, many things are manufactured in Egypt and imported to Rome. So we've got sphinxes, we've got baboons, we've got crocodiles. And we have many, many other impressive decorations that are now all on display in a series of museums, including this colossal Apis bull in Palazzo Altemps. And maybe the most impressive besides this Aswan Sphinx is this relief that some scholars want to associate with the actual physical spaces of the Temple of Isis. And we can see people that are venerating, people that are dancing. We can also see the Ibis bird from Egypt in the base. Of course, we have the remains of manifestations of cult of Isis, imagery associated with Isis in the house of Augustus. We also have decorative features very refined in the Domus Aurea of Nero that have recently been cleaned. So they're quite visible. We see Isis everywhere in the residences of the emperors, including also the Domus Tibidiana. We have a number of artifacts and shrines that are attributed to the veneration of Isis and other Egyptian gods. Here's a whole series of terracottas of that couple, Serapis and Isis. Finally, it's always important to remember just how much Isis was associated with shipping of goods to Rome, in particular grain. Here we have a fresco from a tomb in Ostia, and it's called Isis Gimignana. That's not by chance. So Isis is overseeing this activity. And what's happening here? You have porters that are loading up the ship with bags of grain, and they are being weighed out and measured in a modius. Remember that modius associated with the cult of Serapis? And ultimately, that grain is destined for the warehouses of Rome. Isis had such an impact on Roman religion We've seen some of her major cults and the way that she got to Italy from Egypt. So we'll tackle this subject again in the future. We hope you enjoyed this video. We hope you take a look at our online courses. 
Join us in Rome and throughout the Mediterranean for travel courses and ultimately get involved in learning more about ancient Rome by participating in our free lectures that take place twice a month, every month. This video was brought to you by the Mashantonio Award.